the people who see potential in you and believe in you, that number was far more than. I try to make every day a great day. And I'm not saying that in a way of like, oh, I just wake up happy every single day. I think sometimes it's a, it's a choice. And so the things that make me most happy are my friends and my family and the people that I do day-to-day -day life with. So naturally every day is a good day when I'm in communication with those people. And then also, you know, all of the work that I do is committed to making a difference and to helping people. And so I feel like I'm living my life on purpose. And um, to me, that's a great day. It's being in community with people. It's choosing to see the good, even when times are a little bit hard and um, having fun as well. Yeah. I'd say mine's similar in the sense that it's really just being at peace and being happy. And for me, a lot of that I put in the book too are like these little nuances that I do. Um, you know, like we can get very into the mundane of our, you know, the routine of our lives. And I think it's like finding joy in those like little things. So in the morning, you know, I wake up before the sun and um, but when I walk into the studio every morning, I flicker the lights on and off and I say, <laughs> good morning, everyone. I'm like literally bringing the sun in. Sometimes it could be a little annoying, but like, I think it brings, everybody smiles and it just kind of brings like a levity. And so I think to me, just kind of being happy and at peace every day is, you know, I don't, I'm not a master at it. I, I can kind of get overwhelmed. And I think you're maybe a master at it. I'm trying to be, yeah. I have my moments and that's when I like turn to Raquel and I'm like, I have a lot going on, help me. And she'll usually send a scripture and I'm like, okay, thank you. <laughs> you know, what's interesting is why I, I say that this book is such a reflection of our friendship because whenever I was having a bad day or I was going through something heartbreak or, you know, you don't get that, that career, that job that you were really wanting and working hard for. Raquel is somebody that I would always turn to in those moments. And she's that friend that was, she always met me where I was. She had a scripture ready to like turn it around for me. And so when in the early phases, when I was thinking about this book, cause I had written a different book proposal. It was like a dating book and it was, you know, went, it was just on the cutting room floor. It didn't end up going anywhere. Um, so I wanted to do a devotional and I was like, Raquel's the perfect person to, to do this with because this is exactly like what she is as a friend to me. I go to her, she shares wisdom, she's there for me. And so it was kind of a really nice yeah, and balance. I think that's something Tanya is really great at. On a bad day, you do reach out, you yeah. do say, hey, I'm struggling and can you pray for me or can you yeah. encourage me? I'm having a hard time. And I think sometimes it's hard to be vulnerable. It's hard to say, hey, I'm having a bad day. We wanna pretend like everything's okay. And you really do embody that. Um, for me, if I'm having a bad day, I, I do the same thing. I'll, I'll call a trusted friend, um, Tanya, or my friend Ashley Cook is really solid and great that way too. You know, Ashley. Ashley yeah. um, and then I also, on my own, I'll go, very grateful to live in LA. I'll go and I'll drive down to the beach and I'll I'll take a long walk and I'll listen to my music or meditations and just it might sound kind of simple and you can do this actually wherever you're listening. You don't have to go to the beach. You can go for a neighborhood walk. But I find being in nature and just taking time to be alone and be still and let the spirit come in and and bring me peace. It works every single time. And I'm not just saying that it really does. And so I think taking that time to be alone and really asking the spirit, hey, I'm struggling today. Today's a tough one. Please give me peace. It yeah. can be that simple and it works every time. I don't shy away from the bad days too. Like mm -hmm. I've cried multiple times on the air. I've cried on Instagram. Tanya puts it all out there. I, yeah, I, it's I love all that. Out there. It's I, all I do. Out there. Like I don't want people to think, you know, yeah. that I'm just, I'm always happy and that like, you know, like I have moments yeah. and I cry and, and like, can I say something life. about Tanya too? Is she, early on in her career, she faced a lot with, you know, different people saying, you're too this, you're too that, you're too positive, you're too not, you're, you're never gonna make it in this in this business. Whoa. Yeah, and your I have personality's just, too much. Yeah, and I have watched her stay so uh, true to who she is. She's never backed down, she's, she's stayed positive, she's stayed bubbly, she's, you know, chosen to take the high road over and over again, and her career has just grown and grown and grown, and she's never changed. She's grown, Aww. but she's never changed. She's always stayed true to her, and I think that that is incredible. Thank you. Yeah. I do think that trust is built over time. So I think I was able to kind of see over time that she was a very trustworthy person. I know if I, whatever I told her. And also like I'm in an, in an industry that I need to keep things to myself, but I always knew that I could tell her and it was like a vault. And that was, she's just proved, proven time and time again that I can trust her. But something that is very unique to Raquel that I don't think, and I, 
I'm not as good as it, as good as she is. But when you come to her for something, she doesn't give you her opinion. She listens to you. She doesn't judge you. She doesn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think a lot of times if somebody's going through something, you know, somebody comes back and they're like, oh, he broke my heart again. And they're like, you know, he was always awful. He treated you bad. Like, it's none of that stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. we always just want to give our opinion or kind of share. And she just listens. She's there for you. She encourages you. And I think that's something that I, I try to take into my other friendships too, because I, I can all be the opposite sometimes. And I really want to be better about no judgment. Like I know I could tell her anything and she will just take it and like, it won't even Aww. affect you at times. No, it's it's a really, it's a, it's a gift. Um, trying to fully understand and live out true unconditional love. And when you love someone unconditionally, you're not always telling them what they want to hear. You're saying or listening to what hopefully will lead them to peace. And what I've found is that when you're bashing someone, maybe in a moment it feels good, but it doesn't lead to real peace. Even if that person did do something wrong, it's like, okay, you know what, They that's that sucks that that happened, that's not okay, but we're not gonna waste our time dwelling on that or, or bashing that person. We're gonna you know, focus on the future. We're gonna focus on what leads ultimately to peace. And so I love my friends. I love the people that are close to me. And so I try to give an honest answer. And then sometimes, you know, the person gets back with that person or they stay with them. And so imagine Tanya's one of my close friends. She's broken up with a guy and I'm like, yeah, he's this, he's that, whatever. And then they're back together. And I've said all these horrible things right, about right, the person right. that really she was just venting to me in a moment of a hard time that they were having. And so that's the angle that I tried to come at it from is, is what is the most helpful? What is the most peaceful? What is, is going to, um, be encouraging, encouraging the most to her. Bro, I mean, I welcome that from my friends. Yeah. I hope people are telling me the truth. I hope people are being honest with me and not just telling me what I want to hear because then I can't, I can't grow if people aren't being truthful with me. Acknowledging it, it's being like, wow, that's like, that's not okay, that's wrong. But then, you know, not, not feeding it, yeah, I guess. Yeah. But you know what's oh, interesting what I've learned in, in friendships and relationships is like, there is no right and wrong. Mm. There, you know, there's there's two people, there's two different perspectives. There, we've all grown up differently. We handle situations differently, and I think that as an individual, we just think our way is the right way, and the way we do things is the way that everybody should do things. When in reality, that's not how life is. Yeah. And so, it's kind of just, you know, learning how to to work in that space of like, okay, this is how you see it, this is how I see it. Now, how can we work together to mm -hmm. like get to the finish line yeah I think for ex exactly that reason I think you do 365 it feels like oh wow that's really overwhelming that's like, what we, that's what we <laughs> we're like we were gonna whoa. do 365 yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, mm. no I think 100 is is digestible and it's yeah. you know we could have done 30 people say it takes 30 days to create a new habit yeah. or you, we could have done 90 but I I thought 100 was like a good number you've yeah. got the three digits but it's not like whoa 365 yeah. that long to find hope and joy i want maybe no yeah yeah what do you and know? also <laughs> like i think having a uh, something that you can go to daily for an extended period of yeah. time is good but also if you skip a day or two it's not the end of the world and you still you know what i mean like i think 100 is felt yeah like a good number this is a big one for me yeah. um because like raquel said when i was early on in my career i was it wasn't like a beautiful welcoming for me. It was very much um, my personality is too much. People can only handle me in small doses. I'm a cartoon character. And, and you know, in this career, it's all your personality. So like, that was very damaging at a young age when I was starting out. So in 21, 22. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you hear all that and you believe it because it's coming from people who are way above you in this corporate world, you know? And this is something that I, I am so grateful. You know, I work with Ryan Seacrest and he, from the very beginning has been so encouraging to me and he saw something in me and I, I would not be where I am if it wasn't for him believing in me because I did have to deal with a lot of adversity from other people. Um, it was very damaging. And so, and it was like every step of the way in my career, like I remember when I got my first TV gig at E!, I had it all over again in a bat, like I was like, I'm too much and I need to, you know, lower, lower myself and, and be a little bit quieter. And um, every step and every milestone that I was making in my career, I felt really nervous at the start because I was just like, I'm not supposed to be here. I don't, this isn't, I don't deserve this. 
Um, and, and there's also a part of it too, where it comes from, you know, I, I never dreamed that this was possible, you know, like I, I always envisioned it, but I never thought that it was actually going to be, be a reality. And so when it's actually becoming a reality, it's just this crazy kind of like, I don't deserve this type of thing. Um, and so overcoming it has been a process, like a major, major process, because I've had to kind of unwind and like unhear all of these things. And it's so funny because it's like the people who see potential in you and believe in you, that number was far more than the ones that didn't believe and that try to put me down. But yet those ones are like the loudest voices and they're the hardest that you can't get them out of your head. I think it took me a decade to like get them out of my head. So for me, I think um, having and continuing to remind myself of how big God is and whatever, whoever is listening, you call it God, the universe, a higher, higher power. I think when we have a revelation of, of just how big that is, it's extremely humbling. And so for me, maybe similar to you, I found myself in, in my, I found myself in a lot of rooms with people where I'm like, wow, how did I end up here? And a prayer that I've always prayed is God, I don't want to love anything or anyone more than I love you. And so I think when you go into a room, you understand that I am worthy to be here because I am a human being and we are all worthy. And when you understand the bigness of God, the higher power of the universe, you understand that we all play a small part in this journey of being human. And I think that's really allowed me to overcome imposter syndrome because I do feel worthy. I feel worthy to be in the room with people who maybe I admire, maybe have achieved more than me, but like, what an honor. I get to learn from them and and um, and I'm worthy to be there because I am human. Uh, Around yeah. myself with people who are further along than me, who challenge me, who help me to grow. And I have always been that way because I want to be better. Yeah. And and I don't think we ever arrive. I, I wrote about it in the book, but I said, Maya Angelou, she, she did an interview with Oprah in her, her later years. And and she said, I'm still learning. Yeah. I don't yeah. know when I know enough. I'm still, I've, I've learned, you know, a lot where I try to live what I know, but I still am not there. Yeah. And she was considered to be one of the wisest people in the world uh, it still is. And so I, I try to remember that. I do have to say, I feel like it adds a little bit of fuel to the fire. You know what I mean? Like, I think it made me, I would go into a carpet and I, <laughs> you wouldn't, you, the amount of, prep I did before a carpet was wild. Like I would be, I was doing research. I would watch every single movie, every single TV show, like do the whole background. I, I really would prepare because yeah, yeah. I had that imposter syndrome. Like you're not good enough, you're not good enough. So it made me overachieve, which I think ultimately was a good thing and a blessing. And so I think in a way I, I tried to kind of turn the narrative of imposter syndrome. And it was, I tried to realize like, oh, this is, this is helping me. It's like fueling me a little bit. So I feel like once I started to change the narrative and, you know, I started to grow and I was like, okay. Yeah. I think we take ourselves so, so seriously. I think that it's okay to be silly and totally. to be animated and to like, you know, I, I find there's so much vulnerability in those moments of life. And yet nobody wants to talk about these embarrassing things or, you know, like I used to do when I was dating, <laughs> uh, I would like set the dinner table for myself and my future partner. Like wow. he wasn't there, but I would, and I would clean out my closet. So there was space for him to come. Like I did all those weird, I don't take myself too seriously. You know, I'm like, if somebody says something works for them, I'll try it, you yeah. know, try it. And if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work. Share the embarrassing moments because we're all, we all have them. Give yourself yeah. a drawer that's just empty in your room and give a big chunk of your closet that's just empty. And I was like, this is me creating space. Like, how am I supposed to bring a man into my life that I desire so much if there's no space for him in here? Wow. Like actually wow. no space. There is not an inch of space in this room for somebody to come in. So I created, I left an entire drawer, like a big <laughs> drawer. So cool. I did not know that. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't want to live my life not accepting those things. So I've had times in my life where my flaws or my things that I don't maybe love about myself have really, you know, they've given me anxiety or they've made me feel badly about myself. You know, when I, I especially during my high school years, I was like, do, you know, do I not look good enough? Am I not this enough? Am I not that enough? And it's like, I'm either gonna live like that, live insecure, concerned with, you know, maybe more of the external things, or I'm gonna be so filled up with who God created me to be 
which is loved, valuable, accepted, just the way I am. And through doing that and accepting that and through being myself, I feel like I've been able to cultivate a life that is authentic to me. I have relationships that are real as a result of being myself, of being true to me. Because if we're not, the other path is not, it's not great. You're gonna live constantly anxious. You're gonna have surface relationships because you're hiding a part of who you are. And so I think that it takes courage to be vulnerable, but what's on the other side of that is total freedom and real connection and all the things that we really want in life. I think the what I have found to be the, the issue with this is social media. And I love social media. I have a so really I, great yeah. relationship with it. I have people that the people that follow me on Instagram are so encouraging and so lovely. I get, yes, there's a couple here and there that are negative, sure. but for the most part, it's a really beautiful community for me. So, but I have realized that I think it's really damaging in many ways because we're playing the comparison game. So it's like, yes, I'm gonna be true to myself, but everybody is you know, holding this bag. And so I'm gonna spend all my money to get this bag. So I have it in my social media because that's what everybody's doing. And I'm not sitting here to say, you know, spend your money how you want. But I think that we've been wired to kind of uh, chase this unattainable lifestyle that might not be within our means. And we're like I wrote about in the book, being financially fit was really important for me because and saving um, and you kind of have to like t take that comparison and, and live your own life because you're going to go into debt trying to keep up with the Joneses when that's not in your means. And so I think the comparison game in that way, um, I talk a lot about finances because I think it's not talked about, especially with younger women enough, you know, the importance of saving. Yeah. And also with all these filters, I remember I wrote a specific chapter about this because it was very alarming. I'm 30 years old and I was using this supermodel filter and I like loved the way I, I loved my face. I was like, wow, she's gorgeous. And so <laughs> I, I would get, I would look in my, in the mirror and I would get kind of like how, I even went to the point where I took a screenshot of my face with the filter and a screenshot of my face regular, sent it to my friend that's a plastic surgeon and said, what do I need to do to look like this? Wow. And he responded with mm. like, I don't even know it now. It was a nose job, cheek fillers, you know, some sort of taking out the fat in my cheek. And I was just like, this is so wild. I am a fully developed woman and I'm having this conversation right now. Imagine how damaging this is for somebody younger and insecure and, figuring out who they are. And so I kind of made a point right then and there, I stopped using filters on Instagram because I was like, I don't want anybody to see me in a different way. And I also don't want to mess with my own head and like look in the mirror and think, oh, you know, like I want to look in the mirror and, and see myself. Yeah. And so I made a really big point to just like stop using the filters. And I put a challenge in the book for people to do the same for even just like 24 hours, just to like post without a filter it's okay and and kind of get used to that because i think the more you the more you are accepting of mm -hmm. yourself in every way social media and not on social media it just gives you a different sense of confidence I bring that up because i think that's something that i really struggle with right like very much so you know i thought i was going to be married with kids at 25 and so when that didn't happen i was like oh you know what and i have some i want you to share an example that you have told me before because I think it's really good. I think that um, there's a scripture that I love and it says, talks about like content with little, content with much. You know, it, it talks about being content with whatever circumstance you're in. Mm. And I think what's interesting is that we can be like, oh, I just really want to be married. I really want to partner. And then you talk to your married friends and they're like, enjoy your single life, whatever. <laughs> you talk to people with kids. You're like, I want kids. And they're like, oh, enjoy yeah. having no kids. And you know, I think that each season of life is so beautiful and unique in its own way. And I think when we make a choice to just be happy and grateful for right now and it's like okay i'm single i don't have kids i have my freedom i can pick up and do whatever i want at any time like that is a blessing for right now but tanya got a direct message oh, from someone a, yeah, yeah, yeah. tell him the story okay so, and everybody the story and it is so important to to appreciate the season that you're in because i think i was never shy about the fact that i want like i wanted to be married i want to have kids and that's a desire of my heart so like i would pursue that like i pursued my career when i tell you i went on probably 200 dates in seven years i went on probably more Wow. and i really gave it my all like i pursued it just as hard as i pursued my career and it's funny because i think god did this in like he 
purposefully gave me a very long single season because I would not have pursued my career the way that I did had I been in a romantic relationship. And I know that about myself because I go, I'm all in, you know, like I'm all in on my relationship right now and I love it. It's the best season ever. But had this been 10 years ago, I wouldn't have been able to build what I did. And so I know like God was like, I see you. I know I'm gonna fulfill the desire of your heart. Maybe not in the time that you think. And it's interesting because I got this DM and I had spent the day, um, I went on like a nine mile run and I was cleaning out my apartment and I was saging and I was, you know, I was on Instagram and just saying, you know, what I was doing for the day. And I was going through a breakup. So I was heartbroken and I was really sad and I wasn't shy about it. And some woman responded to me and she said, I would give anything to trade lives with you right now. I am currently breastfeeding one baby, potty training another that's peeing all over the floor while I'm making my husband breakfast. I would give anything to be in your situation right now. And here she is with the life that I desire. And she's saying she wants to switch places with me. And so it was such like a direct message from God that like, you're where you're supposed to be. Enjoy this moment, enjoy the season. It's not gonna be like this forever. You know, seasons don't last forever. They are seasons for a reason. And so it was like very uh, timely, that message. I guess the challenge could be, think about your life today and where you're at and what you're grateful for. So maybe write it down. I'm, if I'm single, I have my freedom. I can go to bed when I want. I can go to the store if I want to. I can go meet a friend. Um, if you have kids, think about, you know, things that you're grateful for with your kids, with your husband. And so maybe the challenge is, you know, I'm grateful for this right now, instead of focusing on future. I want more of this. I want a better job. I want, you know, partner, boyfriend, husband, kid, like just think about it's, it's gratitude, right? Yeah. And I think gratitude eliminates angst about the future. But yeah. I also think um, I remember reading this in your first book, it was about not attaching your happiness to like things. To, to the title or the whatever, you know what I mean? It's like attaching your happiness to this like state of mind and like relationships and that stuff that is what life is about. But I think also but, it's different for women because we do have like a biological clock. Yeah, so there yeah. is like that little timeline and I've, I've been kind of dealing with that a little bit lately, but I think now there's so many resources. There's so much you can do. I know women that are having babies on their own, you know, they couldn't find a partner. And so yeah. they're just doing it on their own. And I think it's such a liberating time to be a woman. And so I think all of these things are slowly starting to like become less of mm. a timeline. One more thing too that I want to say as well, which touches on all of this and helps with it and is actually the reason that we wrote the book is that the best advice I could give to anyone is to prioritize your inner life. Because when your inner life is strong, you can handle anything that comes your way. So those seasons where you're like really wishing and hoping for that thing and you don't have it yet, your inner life is what sustains you. When you get the job, when you have the partner that you've always wanted, it humbles you and it fills you with gratitude as opposed to ego and arrogance and everything in between. When your inner life, when your spirit's strong, even in the mundane moments, that's what gives you inspiration, fills you with awe. And so I think just the best life advice for anyone at any age is prioritize your inner life. That will fill you up to be able to handle anything that comes your way. Yeah, so Brene Brown, uh, talks about shame as shame is I am bad and guilt is I've did I've done something bad and guilt can be a good thing right makes us not repeat the same mistakes but shame is a deep deep belief of guilt can be good and healthy because it helps us to not make the same mistakes again shame is extremely difficult and heartbreaking because it's a deep belief of I am bad I'm not good enough I'm not this enough I'm not that enough and when we live our lives from a place of shame we miss out on on being our true authentic self. And so sh I almost could cry talking about it because shame, it, you know, in friends that I've, close friends that I have that have experienced shame, it breaks my heart because you can see, you know, debilitating. It's, it, it's debilitating. And in my own life, areas where I've felt some shame, maybe I'll go back to high school, maybe, you know, other girls getting the boyfriend or this or that, me not feeling pretty enough, for example. 
you have to do the inner work, right? Because it's like, that's not true. It's like, I am beautiful. God's created me exactly the, the way that I am um, meant to be. And if I go on to carry that shame, then that's gonna affect me. It's gonna affect me when I'm out on dates. It's gonna affect, you know, how I see myself. And that um, is extremely detrimental. And so you get through shame through first acknowledging it, being able to speak it aloud, maybe to a trusted friend, and then you pray about it or you meditate on it. And that's when you do the inner work of like, okay, God, universe, help me to see myself as you see me. Beautiful, wonderful, made exactly the way that I was created to be. And it takes time and it takes work. Tanya's really big on visual, like seeing things visual. So she, you've told me before about your body, you'll write on the mirror, I am this, I am beautiful, I am this, and, and seeing it and speaking that over yourself so when negative thoughts come I'm you know I'm I don't like my love handles or whatever it's like I'm beautiful that my love handles are beautiful and speaking truth over yourself and that is how you come against shame kids that are dealing with shame their brains are still developing or is it's a lot harder when you're adult I think about my friends that are adults and they are are experiencing that shame it's a lot harder to move forward and and change those negative self-beliefs but when you're younger it's a, it's easier because your your brains aren't fully developed so it is possible everyone can do the work everyone can heal and change but it absolutely breaks my heart and and for anybody who's listening who feels shame about something in their life maybe they haven't ever shared with anybody it's like it doesn't matter what it is you are you are enough nobody is ever too far gone there's a mistake you've made there's nothing you've done that can't be um healed and it's just yeah and the difference yeah. that, that she expressed from Brene Brown the difference between guilt and shame is so powerful all we all make mistakes we all trip we all fall and being able to kind of like speak on that guilt pray about it I made that mistake and I don't want to live in that mistake and moving forward with my life like is so there's so much power in that, that I think a lot of people don't know how to get to the other side